Hello guys, my name is Jeff. I've been very lucky to have been given the opportunity to test fly such amazing paramotor wings. And in this journey I was scared out of my wits, but I also learned that I was definitely ready as well as craving for a more agile wing. In this video, I'll share with you my thoughts on three amazing wings. The Dudek Nucleon 4, the Hadron 3 and the BGD Luna 2. And if you stay until the end, you'll get to know which one I've picked and why, so stay tuned for that. So to give you guys an idea of my background and what my opinion is based upon, I'm probably an intermediate pilot, <coughs> advanced beginner. I started last year and I have done around 120 flights and around 115 hours. My all up weight minus the glider is around 110 to 115 kilos, depending on how much pizza I've eaten that week. My current glider is a Dudek Synthesis 2, 29 meters, yes, I know, it's huge. I could probably take someone for a tandem with it, well, not with my current engine. I fly mini plane top 80 and this will become relevant on my test, so you'll see why. My flying style is probably that of the average Joe, just go up and enjoy the scenery for a long time and I really like cross country flying. So starting with the Dudek Nucleon 4. The Nucleon was the first glider I've ever flown after my Synthesis 2, thanks to Chile. So I was immediately impressed with the difference in agility, I mean, on my current glider I can pull the brakes down to my waist and it does a mild turn, seriously. I've flown two sizes of the Nuke 4. First the 24 meters in harmony colors, green and blue. And then the 22 meters in passion color, orange and pink, are actually my favorite. They are both easy to launch, forward and reverse. I mean, coming from a 29 meter jumbo glider, I guess anything would be easy. I would have liked to try all of the gliders in the same conditions, so I could compare the climb rate and sink rates properly, but you can't have everything, right? The first thing I tried once I got some altitude was some high bank turns, which I could do with minimal brake inputs. I really like how the gliders responded to the 2D steering. It was my first time. Oh my God, the Virgin. And it wasn't hard to learn or get used to, well, at least not until the landing. Then I tried a few wingovers, which were super easy to do. I could easily control how big they were and the glider was predictable. Similar to my Dudek, this one was very pitch stable. Any slight surge would be checked by the reflex profile and I didn't have to do anything. I didn't really like the number of loose magnetized straps, which would get stuck in the wrong place. I'd much rather have the trim tabs tucked in by the, an elastic strap rather than a magnet. But those low tip steering handles, oh my god, they should definitely become a norm in paramotor wings. I love them. So comfortable in flight. While testing the speed, the first thing I noticed was that the trim tabs on the 22 meters were quite stiff, but much smoother on the 24 meter for some reason. Trimmed out with full speed bar on the 22, I managed to get around 34 miles per hour, and on the 24 meters about 32 miles per hour. I was a bit disappointed as I expected them to be much faster than my Synthesis 2, but I only gained about 2 miles per hour with the 24 meters nucleo. The Synthesis 2 is a fast beginner's wing. Flying hands off was effortless and very comfortable. No oscillations, nice weight shift turns, just as you would expect from a wing on this level. My first landing was not perfect. I had a bit of roll as I flared, then I realized that the technique to land the 2D steering is a little bit different. My landings were a lot more stable once I opened up my arms on flare, without pulling too much on the tip lines. After that, every landing was great on both sizes. Long flares, nice and controlled. Now, the second wing I was able to and brave enough to fly was the Dudek Hadron XX 20 meters and then a Hadron 3 of the same size, both at the PMC fly-in. 
thanks to Lee and Clive. I didn't have enough air time on them to notice that big difference between the two. Or perhaps I'm just not experienced enough to notice. So I'll just comment on the Hadron 3. I've already posted a video of me flying it, but I didn't comment much on it, so here are my thoughts. It was pretty easy to launch, and even though I had to run half the field of takeoff, I was surprised at how lifty it felt. It climbed out easily with my top 80, and cruise RPM while trimmed in was similar to my Synthesis 2, even though this was almost a third smaller. Impressive efficiency. It was overcast and I flew around 2 p.m. so it was a little bit bumpy. Through the slightly rough air, the Hadron was very pitch stable, but I noticed that trimmed fully in, roll oscillations would take some effort to dissipate by just wake shifting and I ended up reaching to the brakes. Trimmed out, it was noticeably more roll stable and weight shifting was very effective at controlling oscillations. To fly with my friends, however, I would definitely need to fly most of the time trimmed in, so this was an important factor for me at this point. Then testing its top speed, I had no hope to be able to keep level flight while pushing out full bar trimmed out with my limited thrust of the ATCC engine. But that's exactly what happened. I was doing 37, 38 miles an hour without losing any altitude which was very impressive. Then when testing the agility is when I realized I wasn't ready for it. Again, I started with some high bank turns and got them nicely controlled. I immediately noticed a big difference between the Hadron and the Nuclear 4. The Hadron is definitely more agile. I felt confident with it, so I gained a little bit of altitude, though not enough as I later realized, and tried to do some mild wing overs. What I didn't know was that the wing builds up energy very quickly. On the second wing over, I went upside down and turned almost 360 degrees. I didn't panic, I actually enjoyed it, but I was definitely not ready for that, so I decided to land. <laughs> Landing was very easy as well, nice and long flare, and I was glad to already know the technique to land with 2D steering. Overall, I loved the thrill I got from it, and it challenged me as a pilot, but I felt I would be taking too big of a step, so I felt the Nuclear 4 would be a better choice for me at this point. The last glider I had the pleasure to test fly was the BGD Luna 2, 20 meters. This flight was on my birthday. What a great birthday gift. Thank you, Blaze. Forward launch was super easy as well. Actually, I didn't notice much difference between the gliders I tried, perhaps because I'm comparing them to my current wing. So I guess having a difficult glider to launch as my first one helped me develop my technique. Climb out was smooth, but I noticed my climb rate was not as good as with the Hadron, which was kind of expected, as the Hadron was designed for efficiency. Since I've practically only ever flown deck gliders, I could feel the difference in pitch stability. The Luna 2 didn't feel quite as locked in, so after I got some altitude, I tried to induce some pitch oscillations by braking and releasing, by abruptly exiting bank turns, but it showed no sign of going off rails. The Luna doesn't have 2D steering set up from factory, and I actually didn't see anything regarding this on the manual. But the agility didn't disappoint me at all. With just brakes, it felt something between the Nuclear 4, 22 and 24 meters. But with just the tip steering, it was definitely more agile than the 22 Nuke 4. I did a few wing overs as well, and this time I could actually feel when I had to add outside brake. Or that I had already missed the timing a little bit. I found this a great feature of this glider since it will help me dial in my technique and progress as a pilot. I didn't feel anything from the Nuclear 4 or the Hadrons, perhaps because of the reflex profile. And I never felt anything on my glider until I got the collapse. So I think it would be nice to feel the feedback in time to make a correction during my learning process. This time I could fly with my slowest friend, Hey Deval! 
So I could test if he could keep up with me if he trimmed out. He was able to match my trimmed in speed without using his speed bar, which is nice. <laughs> now to test the maximum speed, the trimmers were very stiff to the point that I had to pull the straps to trim in before I was able to release them. Once trimmed out, I was flying really fast. Then when using the speed bar, I noticed that I couldn't push it all the way out with my setup. I'd have to shorten the connection by about two inches. Even then, the speed was very impressive. This is a fast glider. So satisfied with my test flight, I went for a landing. I was very impressed with how much flare I had on landing. It just kept going to the point that I thought I would overshoot, which I almost did. That's an awesome feature for safety. As a bonus, well, look at these colors, man. Amazing. So now I had the very tough decision to make. The Nuclear 4, the Hadron 3, or the Luna 2. I really love the three gliders, but for the same reason I've never bought a motorcycle, I decided not to buy a Hadron 3. I could almost see myself getting overly confident and putting myself in a difficult position. However, I will definitely consider buying one in the future. Between the Nuclear 4 and the Luna 2, it was a very tough decision since they offered me very similar flying experiences, so I had to go down to other aspects. The Nuclear 4 was more pitch stable, so it should be safer in turbulence without much pilot input. But the Luna 2 gave me more feedback. In this aspect, I'd personally choose the Luna 2 because I want to learn and progress, and I feel like that feedback will be important for me. The price for both is very similar, but the lead time for the Dudek was 4 to 5 months, whereas the BGD was just 4 to 6 weeks at the time. Another note that I have is about the colors. The colors of the old Nuclear 4 and the Luna 2 were really awesome, but the new color scheme for the Nuclear 4 are really not appealing for me. I understand they had to change it because of shortage of materials and everything, but that doesn't make them look any better, does it? So with all that in consideration, I've put in my order for a new BGD Luna 2, but the 23 meter wing, which will be a little bit less agile and a little bit slower, but because I plan to fly in different places and different altitudes and different conditions, I think this is a wiser choice. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it and please share it with your friends. Thank you.